Her grandma's dressed up too because it's grandpa's funeral. The little girl is eating her crackers, trying to process everything that's happened that day. She just come back from the grave site where grandpa's casket was put there. And now as she bounces on grandma's knee, she's got questions. This is her first funeral. She, she doesn't know. She doesn't know how this works. And so between mouths of crackers, she asks grandma, Grandma, is grandpa hurting anymore? No, grandpa doesn't hurt. Is grandpa crying like he was in the hospital? No. Where grandpa Grandma's been trucking through, trying to process her grief of losing her husband. She's been trying to get through this moment without letting any tears show. She's a tough old bird. But that question, that innocent question from the little granddaughter, mouth full of crackers, what's heaven like? Now that one, that one starts the tears. And as the tears well up in Grandma's eyes, she points to that and says, Honey, we don't do this in heaven. Honey, we don't get sick in heaven. Honey, we get to stand before God forever and our life is perfect and we'll never be sad again. The little girl puts down her crackers, stands up, straightens out her dress, and says, Grandma, heaven sounds great. Can I go there today? She's right, isn't she? The little girl, the first time you learn about heaven, you'd like to go there. We live in a world where there's too much crying. We live in a world where there's too much dissatisfaction. You know what I mean. You know the stress, and the worry, and the hurt, and the pain. You know the cries that you cry, and you know the feelings you feel, and you think, there's a place that's not like that. There's a place where there is no weeping or crying. I'd like to go there too. I'd like to leave this place where I, I never seem to get ahead. I'd, I'd like to leave this place where my life is so hard. Because you know how that feels. You know how it feels to get through a week and wonder how I got through it. You know how it feels to look at tomorrow and say, I, I really don't want to get out of bed. You know how it feels to be overwhelmed with burdens and worries and say, I, I wish I could get a restart and just try again. You know how that feels. I don't need to tell you about that. And for God's people who are hurting, for God's people who are crying, for God's people who are just filled with strife, God changes where you're looking. God opens up the veil of heaven and he points your eyes up there and he says, here's where you're going. He says, here's where your destination is. He shows you this wonderful, beautiful land and he says, here's where you get to go. You get to go a place where the water of life is present. You get to go to a place where God's throne room sits and all you do is worship him and you've never been happier. You get to go to a place where you never cry again. And that's almost hard to think of. Can you imagine a life without any tears? Can you imagine a life where you're never disappointed, you're never sad, you're never hurt? When God talks about this river of life, when he talks about this golden Jerusalem we just sang, it's almost hard to picture. It's almost hard to process how wonderful life will be because even at your best moments, life here is hard, harder than it should be. As God talks about this life and this perfect picture, it, it's sometimes hard for us to imagine. But then he talks about something that we know too well. In this majestic description of what God has done, he tells us something we don't need any explanation of. He talks about the river of life and the healing and the blessing. On the, each side of the river stood the tree of life, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be 
any curse. The curse of sin is something we need no introduction. Here God at the end of his book goes back way to the beginning goes back to the life he had for his people. He did not create his people to cry. He did not create his people to die. He created his people to be perfect, to live a life in perfect union and communion with him. He gave them life. And so God, in his wonder and in his majesty, he illustrated that for them. He made them a tree, his first people, Adam and Eve. He made them a tree in the garden, and he called that the tree of life. And they could eat of it, and they could live forever. And that was to be their life. Their life was not to be hard. Their life was not to be difficult. Their life was to be eating from the tree of life and living in perfection forever. And all they had to do, in showing their devotion to their Lord, all they had to do was avoid one other tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I didn't want his people to know evil. He didn't want them to hurt or cry or sad. And he said, here, stay by this tree. Enjoy everything else I've made for you. Don't go by this one. And Adam and Eve had a choice. Do I choose life? Or do I choose evil? Do I want to know what evil feels like? If I want to see what God's holding back for me, is God really loving me if he's not giving me everything I seem to want? And they wandered up to that tree. And they ate of that tree. And as soon as they knew evil, their life changed. They hid, they lied to their God. And, and while scripture doesn't say it, I wonder, I wonder if they cried. I wonder if they were overwhelmed with guilt at the stupid thing they had just done. And they just bawled. Because now they knew shame. Now they knew sin. Now they knew guilt. And they, now they knew we don't have access to this anymore. The curse of sin, the curse of death that our first parents, Adam and Eve, brought. All of that because they ate from the wrong tree. All of that because they wanted to see what evil is like. There's something you understand too, isn't it? Something, sadly, I understand. I don't have to talk too much on evil because you, you get that. We too have a similar choice in our life where we choose God's word of life or we choose evil. Will we choose what seems to be good? Will we choose what seems to like? You've got a choice, metaphorically speaking, which tree you're going to live from. Are you going to eat from the life tree? Or are you going to eat from the evil tree? I mean, after all, evil looks good. The promises of things you're not supposed to have. The pleasures of what you can imagine in your mind. Oh, the tree of evil looks so very good, doesn't it? What do you like eating? What is the evil in your life that you like to enjoy and like to get away with? This is your, normally the part of the sermon where I would give you an example. This is normally the part of the sermon where I would say, well, maybe it's this, or maybe it's this, maybe it's this. I'm not going to help you out today. I'm going to ask you to do something much more scary. Take a look here. Take a look here in this heart and say, what is the evil really like? the sin I as a young person enjoy doing and my parents never find out? What is the evil I as an adult enjoy doing? And guess what? No one corrects me because I'm an adult. I can do what I want. What is the sin you and I like to enjoy and get away with? It's here, isn't it? It's a scary thing to look into your heart, to think on sin. It's a scarier thing as a pastor when you do the same. When you pause during the week and you think about your sermon and you say, what's the evil I enjoy? That's frightening to look in that heart. To see the lies that you enjoy. To see the sins that you enjoy. To see how you like to enjoy evil and make it seem like you're not. We don't have to look too hard into our hearts to see the evil that we, want, that we enjoy. 
And you and I know the consequences for such evil. You and I know that we desire evil and because we like that, we don't have life. As we said earlier, we know what we deserve because we enjoy evil. And then today, this is front and center. And then today, our baptismal font right away as we begin our service. Here's where we come. Here's where we bring our confessions. Here's where we bring our cries for mercy. Here's where we come and ask for God's goodness. Because when I look in this heart, I don't see anything good there. I see whole black and evil. I see mercy. It's just out of the tap. But the word God connects with this water, the word that comes and forgives sins, the word that comes and washes clean hearts, the word that comes and creates faith in God as my Savior, faith work and Him alone, the word that is here. That when I'm here, I'm not very happy. I'm not very satisfied. But when I look here, I see God's mercy. I see God's mercy that he would call to me who enjoy evil and he'd say, come to the water of life. I enjoy God's mercy that he would call to you and you enjoy your sins as well. Come to the water of life. Come to the life-giving word that gives you something better. It's the kind of God we have. He did not baptize you because you were a believer. He baptized you to make you one. Before you were worth anything to God, God said, I love this one. And so God us with this simple font. God welcomes us with this ordinary water. With the powerful aspect of We who enjoy going to the wrong tree, we who enjoy running from God, come to this font and say, Lord, forgive me. And my God always says yes. Lord, have mercy on me. And he says, I like to live. Point me to life. And God, mercy reminds you of your baptism you have in that. Then he takes away the, the tears and the water in your eyes. He takes away the struggles and the hurts and the worries and he rips Look what this life is going to be the result of what you golden Jerusalem. You can go to a city the tree of life. It's not hidden from you any longer. No, I'm going to build and I am going to call it Jerusalem. In that city, the tree of life is by the water of life. You will live forever. In that city, you will have the throne of God and you will have access to it each and every day. In that city, you will not cry, you will not die, you will have no pain whatsoever. Here, my friends, is consolation for you. Here is relief for your grief. Here is sanctuary for your soul. Here is consolation for your conscience. My life can stink right here, and often it does. But I've got a city where the tree of life is waiting for me. What Adam and Eve lost, God still gives. I've got a golden Jerusalem waiting for me. And how beautiful that is. How beautiful that Bernard of Cluny in the 12th century would write that hymn we just sang today. And how does he describe this heavenly Jerusalem? How does he, how many years ago, he says, O oh, sweet and blessed country, home of God's elect. O oh, sweet and blessed country that eager hearts expect. This is what I want. I want the golden city with God. I want no tears and no pain and no crying anymore. And that's what I look on. Yes, our lives today, they are hard. Our lives today are stressful. Our lives today are difficult. And we live in a hard time. We live in a nation divided after election. We live in a world that people aren't advancing as they want. We live in strife and turmoil, don't we? And yet God doesn't point you to here for help. He doesn't point you there. 
He opens heaven and says, Here, here's your hell. Here's the result of your faith. Here is a sweet and blessed country you look for and you long for. That's really the only thing that dries tears. That's really the only thing that comforts grandmas as they have granddaughters on their lap. That's really the only thing that keeps us moving forward too, isn't it? Our life is not of this world. Our goals are not of this world. Our tree is not of this world. We look forward to the tree of life God has waiting for us in heaven, the gift of faith that will be realized. And so as you go throughout your days and those tears cry, think of the sweet and blessed country. As you go throughout your life and you feel the burdens and the anxiety and the depression that comes, think of the blessed country. As you go through your life and you don't get the answers you seem to want, you don't have the life you seem to imagine, think of the sweet and blessed country where you will not be able to cry any longer because God does not allow it. The curse of sin is gone. The tree of evil is gone. And when you get to your heavenly Jerusalem, when you get to your tree of life, you won't know how to cry and you won't be ever able to remember how. Because this is the sweet and blessed country God has waiting for you by faith. Will you join the brothers and sisters who have departed before? And this is the sweet and blessed country you have in mind as we go through our day today. Amen. Please stand.